However, that's only a label that we give to something that changes like this cube changes. We call that an optical illusion. That's the name we give to it. But the question really isn't so much about that. It's about what you are experiencing. See, one of the things we tend to do is when we have an experience which is outside our normal range of experience, is we label things like optical illusion. Once we label it and put it in a box, we no longer have to deal with it. Oh, he's crazy. Put him in a box, don't have to deal with him anymore. Oh, that's sad that that person died, but put him in a box, bury him, don't have to deal with it anymore. We label it, got it, put away, don't deal with it anymore. So many times in medicine, we label illnesses. We say, oh, that's schizophrenia, as if we know what the hell that meant. No one really knows what schizophrenia is. We look at the brain and say, well, the brain, ba da dee, da da do, da da wa, dee da ba, boop, ba, boop, ba, boop, ba. That's it. That explains it. No, it doesn't explain anything. Just a label we attach so that we can deal with it. Okay? A woman says, I have a pain in my sciatic. How does she even know she has a sciatic? Her doctor told her she has a sciatic. So therefore, oh, that's pain, that's your sciatic. Oh, okay, now I know it's that, so now I will deal with it as that. I'll take medication to deal with it as that. And then we get caught in the box game, where as long as we got it labeled, we know what to deal with. When you get at the level of vibration, you're not, at, you're not dealing with the objective reality of that's of this, this is a that. I know what they are. I don't have to deal with them anymore. We're at the level of plus and minus. We're at a level of vibration where all the possibilities are still present. And we haven't decided yet whether that's a sciatic or maybe that's a, a nose hair going crazy in my brain. It's, it's neither let me try to explain about what it is in terms of how it appears. It's neither not in matter nor in matter. Because if it was one or the other, then a distinction has been made. So it's got to be something which cannot fit into any kind of compartmentalized thinking. To some we call this God. To some we call it soul. To some we call it the mind of God. To some we call it the universal consciousness. To some we call it the Buddha nature. It has many, 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 many names. None of them describe what it is. See, I'm talking to your internalness. I'm talking to something that's much bigger than you presently think you are. I'm not talking to you just as your little tiny, see, you're not really here as little tiny bodies, because that odds are too much against that. So I'm talking to something much, much more profound. So that's where we're going. That's what we're trying to get in touch with. You knew it when you, got, when you first were born. You knew it when you first came into the world. But then your mama and your papa and your grandpapa and your grandmama and the people around you and your brothers and your sisters they all told you what a blank you were. Fill in the blank with anything you wish. And you bought it hook, line, and sinker. So we want to get in touch with something else, something that's beyond even the seven billion years that we have to exist on this planet before it goes, before our sun decides to become old age and go red giant and explode out of existence. Something else has to happen. Some of you may say, oh, well, why do sons do that? Why does it have to go red giant? Why does it have to do it? I don't want it to do that. Well, I want to tell you something. Red giants are the birthplace of matter. 
That's where the matter, see, you're made of star stuff. All the matter that you're made of comes out of stars, dying stars gave birth to the material that you're made of. There's not a soul, in this, there's not a, a molecule, in, there's not an atom, in this, there's not an electron in this building that hasn't been born in the surface, on the surface of a dying red star somewhere. Some of you came from the early beginning of the galaxy. I'm one, not the galaxy, of the whole soul, uh, no, not soul, of the universe itself. You got here when the Big Bang occurred. Some of you are Big Bangers. So Earthians, solar systems, Big Bangers, whoever you are, the odds are against you for being here. So if you're here, something special is going on. Something's going on that we may not have taken into account. That's what we want to find out. The world is made of possibilities. Possibilities are waves of vibration. And those are the things which, when added together, can interfere with each other to produce something new. When you square those, they become probabilities. Those are something old. They're the things which we call the material world. They're the things which we normally deal with in our everyday world. We use probabilities all the time. And it's amazing how often they come up in our everyday life. I mean, they come up in very surprising ways. But we use them all the time. If I had more time with you, I would give you some more examples of how surprising probabilities are. But this is your role as an observer creator. You bring your experience into existence. You bring things out. And you use these basic three rules. One, recognize that possibilities vibrate. Plus and minuses. Squaring makes things happen. Getting things all square means you've assigned a probability to everything in your life so that you know that when you pick up the toothbrush, put on the toothpaste, put it in your mouth this way, brush this way, that tooth is going to get clean. You've been doing that enough time. You know without thinking that if I put my foot here, then here. This is all a probability game. It looks like it's pretty certain, but, you know, there's always a possibility of something happening that I can't... So what I'm trying to say to you is that, you know, there, there are things in life that are probabilistic. And you don't always know that by doing something one way, it's going to continue going the same way. Stuff happens. Probabilities can shift or change. We're always dealing with probabilities, and this is what we do when we learn something new. We shift probabilities. But what I want to get you to is the shifting of possibilities before that even takes place. You choose when to square, which means that you choose at the fundamental level of your vibrational existence which possibilities you want to enhance and which ones you don't. Well, let's start from a scientific point of view. If there is anything called an I, a yo, it's got to be in the body. Where else could it be? It certainly isn't to my left or to my right. got to be in the body. So let's investigate. Where is his true nature, his I-ness? Where is his eye? Let's investigate. We'll put electrodes, we'll paste things on his body, we'll test. We'll find out where the indicates he is. But, wait a minute, she says. Does he have a true nature? Does he have an eye? Maybe this is a robot we're looking at. How do we know what it does? Is this really a human being with an eye inside? And maybe it's just some artificially designed human being that only looks like a human but is a robot. How do we know what it really is? Does he have one? Well, let's look over here. No, let's look over there. 
Let's look here. Let's look there. Let's look everywhere. Can we find out where he is? Who are you? Who are you? Where are you? 